Hey and welcome back lovely people. So in this time of lockdown, I'm going to be mainly doing a video blog of daily life in lockdown France. But there are going to be science stories which I'll cover occasionally. And today, here's a good one. I'd never really thought, what really is the cloud? It's marketed to us as this cloud of stories that's available for all your personal data. But today it's come into focus. Bravo to Netflix, who are hosted by AWS Amazon Web Services, for reducing their bandwidth of their online movie streaming down from their three gigabytes per second 4K quality down to a one gigabyte service, which will be HD or slightly lower. Interestingly, as a film editor, did you know that there's almost no way that the human eye can actually perceive the difference between 720 and 1080? You really can't see much of a difference. So everything in 4K, 6K, 8K is pretty ridiculous unless you've got the equipment to actually see it in its full glory. So, of course, Netflix are doing this because Europe is on lockdown and a lot of us are actually working from home. I've not noticed that the internet is getting any slower, but it could, and that would be a disaster. I, and I suspect a lot of other people, haven't really thought about the physicality of the internet. Where are things actually kept and how much energy does it use? Digital technology we use, including the internet, is responsible for about 2 to 3% globally of carbon emissions, about the same as the aviation industry. It's like a dirty secret. We're seen as saints in the digital industry. Let's take an average internet minute. 200 million emails, 3.5 billion web searches, one and a half million Tinder swipes. Each one of those things requires a bit of energy from a power hungry machine. And I'm contributing to it. Did you know that YouTube have 500 hours of new films uploaded every minute and all of those films are on a hard drive in a server farm like this one more and more of these large shed structures are being built mainly in northern climates to keep them cool because the energy they consume is enormous the cloud is not somewhere up in the sky the cloud is not uh, hanging up there the cloud is a physical location like here can you imagine how much electricity all of AWS, Amazon Web Services, who host Netflix or Google actually use to provide a streaming service like this on YouTube. It is phenomenal. And of course, that all uses up precious natural resources. Within the next decade, up to 20% of the world's energy, energy production will be associated with this industry and if 20% of that energy production is associated with carbon production we're in trouble we will either have to abandon our environmental commitments or this industry will collapse so in these difficult times when we're all working from home it's a good opportunity for us all to think about where our services are really coming from so that's what was going through my head this morning. How much energy are we really using? And it was prompted by the excellent decision of Netflix to reduce their bandwidth very slightly. And we won't really notice a difference. Oh, and this bandwidth reduction is only in Europe, not in North America. It will be coming your way soon, I guess. Can I take this opportunity to wish you all well? Keep watching Dorothy and ours daily vlogs on life here in lockdown, friends. Today, we're going to do how do we buy a packet of bacon when we can't leave the house? <laughs> there is a solution, but it, of course, includes some bureaucracy because we live in France. So tune in later today if and when we finish that film and it goes well. <laughs> so all of you, Please stay safe, 
keep well and remember the truth is out there.